Hi, I'm Garrison Johnson from the Vanderbilt University Advanced Robotics and Mechanism Applications Lab. This video will explain how to calibrate your 3RRR robot. Before you get started with this tutorial, you should have your robot fully assembled and the Arduino IDE should be installed on your computer. If you don't already have this done, go to the main course webpage, scroll down until you see this section that says Technical Report, and then download the technical report. This technical report will have a detailed explanation of how to assemble your robot and how to set up the Arduino IDE. Once you have this completed, go to the section of the report that says Getting the Course Files. Here will be a link to a Dropbox folder called Arma NRI 3 RRR Robot. Go to the subfolder called Arduino Code and download it by clicking this blue button here. You can either download it as a .zip or save to your Dropbox, whichever you prefer. I'm going to download it as a .zip. Open it up and extract it. You can save it wherever you like. Within this folder will be a subfolder called Calibration. Copy this folder Go to your Documents. There should be a folder in your Documents called Arduino that was created when you installed the Arduino IDE. Go there. Then go to the Libraries subfolder that was also created. And then copy the Calibration folder into this folder, like this. In this folder, you will find a file called Calibration.h. This is a C++ header file that contains some variables that we will include in our Arduino code. So right click on it, go down to open with, select notepad or any other text editor of your choice. Notepad will open, showing some C++ code. Now go back to uh, the place where you downloaded your C++ code. I mean, your Arduino code. And go ahead and open RRR microsecond calibrate pot.ino. The Arduino IDE should open, showing some Arduino code. This line here is where we included calibration.h in our Arduino code. So go ahead and upload that to the board now. When it's done uploading, it should show you a message that says done uploading over here. Once it is done uploading, go ahead and remove the center of the robot. I've already removed the shoulder screws from here and here for demonstration purposes. So now, once everything is done uploading, when you turn the potentiometer, servo 1 will move. You will, after done calibrating, you will be able to move the potentiometer all the way to one side and have the leg line up exactly with the five degree notch. These are the five degree notches here, here, and here. And you will be able, when you turn it all the way to the other side, it will exactly line up with 175 degree notches here, here, and here. There are also 90 degree notches halfway in between, here, here, and here. So go back to RRR Microsecond Calibrate Pot, and then click over here on Serial Monitor. Serial Monitor should open, showing the angle that the potentiometer thinks it's at, or the, uh, the servo thinks it's at, and then the pulse width that it actually is at. Turn it, turn the potentiometer until the leg of servo one lines up exactly with the five degree notch. For me, this seems to be at 580 microseconds pulse width. So go back to calibration.h and change the first value of the array m of theta min 
to be 580 or whatever value, value it was for you. Then go back to the serial monitor and turn the potentiometer until it exactly lines up with the 175 degree rotation. Here you will see that for me, this is 200 or 2,290 microseconds. So I'll go back to calibration.h and change the first value of m of theta max to be 2,290. I've already done it, but you would change it for yours. So now you've calibrated servo 1. This means that any position of the servo can be linearly interpolated between 5 degrees and 175 degrees. So now it's time to start calibrating servo 2. To do this, scroll down until you see this variable i. Change i to be 1. And go ahead and re-upload our, our, our microsecond calibrate pot. See that it says done uploading. Go back to calibration.h, save it, and then turn the potentiometer, and you'll now see that servo 2 moves. So go ahead and go back to the, uh, the serial monitor, and you'll see, again, the angle the servo thinks it's at and then the pulse width that it actually is at. So turn the potentiometer until it exactly lines up with a 100, uh, I'm sorry, with a five degree rotation. And copy that to the second value of m of, m of theta min. Then turn it all the way the other direction and then edit the, or until it lines up with a 175 degree rotation and change the second value of m of theta max. Save calibration.h, go back to our, our Microsoft Calibrate pot, change i to 2, and then repeat save and re upload, and then repeat the process for servo 3. This concludes the first step of calibrating your robot. Now, we will address this Q home offset. So go back to our, our Microsoft Calibrate pod and change I back to zero. Then turn the potentiometer until you see that servo one lines up exactly with the 90 degree notch. See what the pulse, see what the angle is at. For me, it's at 85.92. Go back to calibration.h and change the first value to 90 minus 85.92 or whatever it is for you. And you're gonna to wanna to repeat a similar process by changing the value of i, zero for servo one, one for servo two, and two for servo three. The reason for this is because indexing in C++ starts at zero. So you're gonna to wanna to repeat this process for each of the servos, servo one, servo two, and servo three, remembering to re-upload every time and saving calibration.h every time. And once this is done, you have calibrated your pot. What this home, or your robot, what this home offset is, is because of the construction of the robot, even though it's commanded to go to exactly 90, 90 degrees, it won't go exactly there. So this will just bring the robot exactly to 90 degrees. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy 
your parallel 3RR robot. 